did it. Good. All right. So welcome to our uh, second second speaker of this session. Uh, this is Othmar uh, Weber from Bear. We haven't turned on his screen yet. All right. And he's going to be talking about a new tool called uh, Radonaut, a tool for metadata management. Very good. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Otmar Weber, and I'm working for Bayer, a German life science company. And um, uh, unfortunately, I also have the boring talk topic talking about metadata handling. <laughs> so it looks like that this is something that keeps the community busy. And um, so it did for us at Bayer. Oh, I have to use this, I think. Yeah. So I was at uh, my company was introduced in 2014, though we are using it for five years now. And it's um, used as in most use cases for storing scientific data. Um, so mainly genome data, but also images and other things. And um, the community who is using that is um, um, three types of persons, data scientists. At first, uh, these are the ones um, putting data in and getting data out for scientific reasons. And we have data manager who um, care for um, the completeness and um, the fairness of the data. And the data loader, that is something like a sequencing center that is providing the data, but um, uploading to IROTS and providing to, for example, data scientists. Um, yeah, the amount um, is not as much as some here in the audience. It's just 160 terabyte at all, but um, steadily growing. So, yeah, we have three personas playing the metadata game. The first one is the data scientist. He's mainly interested in working with the data in his research project and wants to be very fast at this. And um, after he is finished, he has to put his results in IROTS and has to put um, metadata to it um, that is um, following a certain standard. And his statement is, um, I don't like IROTS, I ha but I have to use it. And I don't like bi uh, bureaucracy and rules. So the data owner, that is another personality, She's the one um, who is um, yeah, somehow responsible for the value of the data. Sometimes data is bought from other research institutes, and she makes sure that um, the data is well kept. Um, she also preserves the access rights to the data, and um, for her, data is more like as an asset. So for her, data is, has a large value. The data manager itself makes sure that the data is properly handled in terms of um, scientific standards. And um, she has made up her mind what metadata attributes might be needed to accordingly um, gain value out of stored data. Um, and her goal is um, to make the data fair. And so these three are the ones who are playing this game. And um, so the uh, yeah, data manager is quite creative in creating rules. So she has the idea that um, certain that um, studies have different types. And each type of studies has a different set of metadata that has, be, has to attach to it. And um, she also thinks that um, all data should be um, attached to all um, um, items in the um, file tree, so um, inheriting it down. And um, she also wants to make sure that all terms, or some terms that are entered at least for some um, attributes, are um, validated through ontologies. And um, some file types also need additional attributes. Um, she, that's just her rules, but she does not have to follow that. That is part of the work of the data scientist. So um, that's why he's a little bit annoyed on that. Um, yeah, that was our first approach. Um, the data manager made up an um, XML style rule sheet that um, does pattern matching on certain IRODS passes and um, 
is defining all metadata that are required to be um, attached underneath that path. That is just needed for veri verification purposes. And um, the data scientist itself has to use a command line utility, which takes the rule file as an input for, for verifying um, the metadata that the data scientist is providing. So the file itself um, containing the metadata attributes was just a plain TSV file. And um, this TSV file could be created using an Excel sheet. And in this Excel sheet, you have all um, attributes that are mandatory and also optional, perhaps, for a certain file tree. Um, so the typically workflow was the data scientist is filling out that Excel, is um, exporting um, the contents to a TSV file, and then applying that on a command line level um, on, the, on the Unix prompt. So that typically re runs into verification errors. Then he has to check the output file um, to see what errors happened, then um, correct the Excel, do the export again, and um, at least with two steps, he's there where he wants to be. And then, because it's um, not a nice way of working, he stores a copy of the Excel to reuse that on the next study that um, he um, wants to upload. So if time goes by, the rule file has changed meanwhile, and um, so therefore he probably will also run in verification errors next time when he wants to upload a study. And um, so basically, he was not very, um, um, he did not like the solution. So, and that is why we thought there might be another iteration needed. And um, so our idea was to introduce a new tool, which is basically visual. Well, we had um, set up a DevOps team for that, and um, this is a product vision. So for scientists who need to ensure compliance with data, security, privacy, and find information in IROTS, Rodinout is a web application that enables viewing and managing metadata. Unlike the existing command line tool, our product is self-explaining, easy and fast to use, and improves user experience with IROTS. So, yeah, the tool itself is, um, as I told, visual. Um, so um, you, there is a controlled vocabulary, um, which is um, a configuration of the backend. And it's also supporting um, lookup lists and um, ontology lookups. It's um, using plain IROTS features. Um, also, um, the access rights are preserved, and um, not, no byte in the IROTS code is changed. We also introduced um, a new thing that we called metadata inheritance. Um, and um, during using that concept, that means that you can just set metadata on a certain collection. And then all children of that collection gain also this metadata. And we found that is a long process if you have a large file tree. So therefore, we also um, introduced um, some sort of asynchronous jobs, which lock the file tree to make sure that no one is working on the metadata while inheritance is going on. And this whole stack is based on open source technology. We are using Docker. Um, the front end itself is one container um, with um, React.js, and um, the back end is using Java Spring Boot um, and utilizing the Tarcon API. Good. So that's the point where the demo starts. Hopefully it works. So here is just the um, login, Targon to uh, the iWatch server. Well, that failed. That's an iRods login. Oh. Yeah, perhaps I should write that. And um, what you can hear here, uh, 
Z here is um, just um, a rep representation of the file structure that can be seen in iWrot. Um, the navigation is done downwards by just clicking on the folders, upwards by using the breadcrumbs. If I now have, want to look um, what metadata has been attached, then I can just use um, this view icon and then um, a model opens and shows um, the attribute value pairs. No units because um, at our company we did not find any, any use case for using units. Therefore, this is not displayed. Um, the right icon states um, how inheritance is handled. So this basically means that this um, attribute Bayer study ID is inherited the file tree down to all children. And you can also have the case at this level that um, the value is not inherited. That is also stated by this icon. So if we now have a look at, the ch at one child, it looks a bit different because all values that you see here are not entered on child level, they are entered on parent level, and this icon is stating that um, this is just inherited from the parent. And um, if I want to switch to the edit mode, I will see that I cannot change anything here until I change the inheritance status. So. That basically means that now this child with this attribute becomes something like um, the parent. And on that level, I can just define um, a new attribute or a new value and um, inherit this from this client down. There is also something like um, verification of um, the data entered while leaving the field. Um, so here, for example, um, the field is limited to five characters. And what we also have is integration into ontologies. So for example, this term is looked up in an ontology. And then Verification somehow should start. So as you can see, this term is not the right one in SNOMED CT. Yeah, another thing, um, attributes which are mandatory are um, stated here with a red star. They must be provided during um, entering the metadata, um, non-mandatory attributes can just be removed by clicking on the minus sign and additional attributes can also be added. Um, this list has been pre-compiled by the data manager and um, <coughs> contains all the attributes that are allowed for that type of study and um, can be added if you will. That's basically it. Yeah, so what is happening behind the scenes? Um, to implement something like inheritance, uh, we used um, a custom attribute called pass on attribute, and this um, is set on the root of an inheritance um, and contains the attributes that should be inherited as a tree down. And um, of course it needs to be set multiple times if you have more than one attribute and um, setting it the same attribute on a child level means breaking the inheritance. Um, 
We also introduced a background job um, that is um, recursively applying inheritance the tree down. And this, that's a log flag and uh, states um, the user who is editing the metadata that metadata currently cannot be changed as long as the job is running. There's another reason why we um, choose to use a job that is um, we wa wanted um, not to block the GUI for the user who has entered the metadata when he's pressing save. And um, also, um, if iRods is stopped, meanwhile, um, or during an inheritance operation is running, um, then um, you typically have to catch on um, if it's restarted and um, therefore it's using the log file for that. Good. Yeah, some things are not perfect um, or missing currently. That is something like metadata search, then file creation and upload and possibilities. Um, we have some bugs in. Of course, you can always do better documentation. And some things um, that hinder us currently to open source, that is that the abstraction of the infrastructure services, like for example, the auth provider and the ontology definitions is not as far as we would like them to have. Okay, so these are the people behind um, the solution. We had a product owner from the business and um, a subject matter expert or user, if you will, and um, some developers working on that to make it happen. Thanks very much for your um, attendance. Do we have any questions? I have one. Oh, front row. Maybe. Um, oh, hi. Uh, when a data object, in, well, if anything is inheriting uh, metadata and then is moved out of its uh, parent collection, will the metadata be removed or did I misunderstand or miss that? No, the thing is um, the metadata itself is added to the object as always. So that means um, the uh, children all have the object attached and if they don't have a pass on attribute, then it's just move, move with them. Okay, thanks. That was the same question. It's amazing. Is there anything that, uh, you, you had a slide about outstanding trickiness, uh, kind of. Is there anything that's, that was, what was the most surprising thing about dealing with the inheritance model? Because we, we've, we've struggled with this uh, ourselves and haven't come up with a standardized solution. You also said that you weren't using the unit. Where are you storing the inheritance information? In, is it in the unit? No, it's the attribute pass on attribute. And okay. then just entering um, the name of the attribute mm -hmm. that uh, should have uh, the inheritance feature. Okay. Anyone? All right. Well, thank you so much. Very Welcome. good.